Hi, yeah, Martin here and welcome to this week's project video. I hope you're well and you've had fantastic weeks and weekends in your workshops. Thank you very much for all of the comments on the last video um, I posted, which was um, a revisit of uh, this piece that I turned 20 odd months ago. Now, one piece that never made it to um, YouTube because I didn't film it was this piece called Silver Sea. And it's kind of a sister piece to, uh, to Golden Fire. And I thought I would revisit that one today as well. So I've got a pencil and a piece of paper because I need to take, uh, I need to make some notes of some measurements. And the first thing I'm going to do is mark out where I want the frame to be. It's going to be the frame. Now I'm marking this on the back of the piece and you'll, you'll, you'll see why in a second. So the frame of this piece, I'm going to make it, a, it, it says here it's an inch, but I'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it uh, three quarters of an inch. I would normally do this in a combination of millimetres and inches, depending upon which is the nearest whole number. There's a little clue as to what's coming in the middle. It needs a radius, sorry, a diameter of... 70 mil, so that's 35. Oh. Right, so I need to square this off, set it all down, screw it down, and um, start turning the frame. Right. So I've squared it all off and looking at the blank, there are some wormholes in it, which is um, a bit of a shame really. Now these screw holes here are from when I had the piece the other way around on the plywood faceplate to flatten off the back. So when I screw it on now, it's as flat as it possibly can be. Now I'm gonna put the frame on first and I said it needed to be uh, three quarters of an inch. So I'll mark three quarters of an inch. Right, there's three quarters of an inch. So that's gonna be the frame. So I'm gonna take that down and make, um, I'll make a rounded frame to it. Uh, and then from the frame up to the center, I want a dome. The whole thing I want to be domed for the moment. just beginning to catch the top of the screws which is a real bum I'd forgotten I'd forgotten to take into that that into account you might be able to see a little screw mark just there and another one there so I'm gonna have just have to sand that over and then um, fill the holes later Damn. move the screws in so I'm gonna move the screws in, which means I can then finish doing the bit. Right, I'll do that. Okay, right, switch everything off, move the screws, come back. So now the piece, I've, I've sanded it down. I moved the screws inwards, so they're, they're about here now, so well away from the surface of the wood, um, or surface of the piece, even. And I've sanded it down to 400, and I've added a little accent line there, which you'll see come to life later. But now it's all sanded down to 400, I can start applying the color. And I want to apply the color before I move the centers, because I don't want to have to keep moving backwards and forwards and everything like that. So I'm going to start applying the color. I'll fast forward this bit, because you've, uh, you've probably seen me apply color 100 times before. Now I got part way through the colouring process and I suddenly thought to myself the bit I want as a as a separate item not the crescents I want it in a flat on a flat bit so rather than just having the whole thing domed I want it I want the the bit that I'm going to be putting in there um on a flat so I've moved 
the piece now off center and I've lined it up with cut number four. I hope you can see that there. So cut number four, which is the center piece, or the, the, the main sort of point of interest. Right, so there's the center. I hope you can see that. You may not be able to, but I can see the center there. So it's a little bit spirally, I know what I mean. <laughs> um, so I want that bit flat, but I also want it flat a little way out to the outside. So I'm going to extend the radius is going to go flat. Yes, that's what that's yes, that's what's gonna happen. Right, so I'll just flatten that off. There, that's, that's okay, I'm... Remember to take your ruler off the lathe bed before you move the tool rest back. So I'm happy with that. And now I can add the rest of the color. So I will fast forward through this bit. And uh, see you on the other side. And now the colouring is done, I need to cook up some of this stuff, which is bismuth. Um, it's quite a dense metal with a low boiling, or a low melting point, should I say. Um, and it's a lot safer to use and a lot more attractive to use than, um, than lead or even pewter, dare I say. And um, it oxidises, when it cools, it oxidises into... Um, oops into some pretty cool colors. I hope you uh, can see those colors. Um, but the colors vary depending upon how quickly the, um, the metal cools and uh, the ambient temperature and all sorts. So there's absolutely no way of knowing how the bismuth is going to um, come out. It could go blue and pink. It could go, I don't know, blue and green. It could do absolutely anything. So this is a really random part of um, a really random part of this project and I'm really excited. Um, so what I've got over here is I've got my stove set up. Um, now I need to preheat the um, the crucible, I need to preheat that so it doesn't shatter with um, um, the temperature shock and then I need to melt the actual bismuth. Now it's beginning to melt, I can use the end of a little camp ladle to scoop off the, um, the residue and the, and, the, and the crud from the top to try and make the pour as pure as possible. Okay, now I'm gonna take the crucible off Turn the gas off. And then turn the gas off of the, uh, of the bismuth. And then very carefully 
pour it in. And now we've got to leave it a few minutes to um, cool off. And whilst it's cooling, what it does on the inside is that it crystallizes into these really cool sort of cubic, cubic shapes. And then when I break the top of that off, it will reveal this um, hopefully stunning, uh, stunning um, arrangement of uh, cubic crystals on the inside. It's really cool if you can get it right. Okay. Right, I'm really chuffed. We've got third time lucky. We've got um, a stunning blue, where can you see that? We've got a stunning blue array of crystals in there. And I'm absolutely astonished at how amazing that looks. I am just blown away by that. Um, now, before I can put it into the piece, um, I need to let it cool down completely and, um, and, oil, um, and oil the piece before I can start turning out the, uh, the dish that that is going to sit in. Wow. Now with the piece oiled and, um, and the cast nice and cool, I can do a test fit and I've, oh, I've also carved out the, um, the dish for it. I can do a test fit and I can see that it's going to fit in there. An absolute treat. So I hope you can see that. So last thing to do for today, at least, is get some epoxy. Ah, careful not to get it on the actual piece. And then now this is the orientation that the piece is going to be in when it's finished. So I can turn that around to the orientation that I want it and I think that looks pretty good so I'm going to bring up the tail stock and with a scrap piece of wood just apply A little bit of pressure so have some lunch come back right okay so it's Wednesday and I've had some time to think about this piece and um, I don't like it I really really don't like it the the bismuth insert here is just far too small for the piece. So I'm going to make it smaller, much smaller, and do something else to it. It's still going to be kind of blue and greeny, I think, um, but I definitely need to do something to it. And also, I don't like these crescents either. And also, another reason for making it smaller is I'm also not satisfied with the, um, the screw holes that um, appeared in the first part of the video and also the wormholes. I really, really don't like those either. So by making the whole thing smaller, um, I can improve it. Uh, so I've knocked it off center a little bit so I can get a decent border um, over the top of um, the insert here because obviously I want to protect that. And um, so rather than going through and describing everything that I'm going to do to it, um, you can sit back and watch it in glorious slow mo well not slow motion it will take forever fast motion speed it up right so here we go
Right, so what I did there, as you saw, was I, I turned it down smaller and uh, created a, a more ornate frame aspect to it. And then I added some of the metal reactive paints. Um, I've left this bit here unfinished um, so I can sand back a nice definite line between the colour that I added in the first part up here and the, uh, and the reactive paint down, down here. Now this is bronze reactive paint I've used with an undercoat of um, the iron reactive paint. So now we're at the stage where it looks absolutely atrocious whilst it dries off. And I just hope it works. <laughs> well, there we are. The battle, I think, is won. I was really worried as to whether or not I could, uh, could pull this piece off. And I think I have. It's turned out really nicely. It's much nicer, um, it's much nicer in its proportions than it was um, beforehand. But I finished it off by sanding the, uh, the natural wood bit here and... Um, finishing the whole lot with uh, with Hampshire Sheen over um, a satin sealer and just the boss area here. <clears throat> the metalwork area has been sealed and uh, had a little bit of um, a gloss lacquer applied to protect the oxidisation there. So overall I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out to be honest. Down here we have a couple of videos that I think you might be interested in. One is from me and the other one is the video that gave me the inspiration for the bismuth in the turning. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, please do like, share and subscribe and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Bye for now.